welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Elkion Wiersma and today I'm going to uh, talk about Miltoniopsis because I did, uh, did get two requests to talk about them a little bit. The first one is from uh, Sandy and um, also I did get a comment from Mar Marie Lynn. I hope I pronounced it right. Um, yeah, basically what I'm, uh, how I treat my uh, Miltoniopsis is, well, first of all, I have a uh, care video about them. It's a fairly long one. It's about an hour or so. Uh, it's from a care collab that I did two or three years ago. I'm not sure. I think it's two years ago. So I will link that so you can check that uh, one as well. But that's fairly long. Today I tried to shorten it up, uh, go over the care steps uh, step by step a little bit and give my tips and tips tricks, things to uh, to watch for, what I have learned so far, and uh, hopefully that will uh, will help you out uh, as well if you like to grow them, or maybe you have them, they are not doing so well for you. I hope I have some tips uh, tips and tricks. Um, so yeah, let's, let's start with the beginning. So yeah, most of the times I found that they are, the, well, first of all, described as fussy, which I do agree with. Uh, shady loving plants and cool to cold loving plants. Um, that's the that's the things you will will find. And of course, they do not um, need much fertilizer, and they like to be uh, evenly moist. Well, first of all, shady. What is shady? I mean, I have an idea by shady, but yours is probably completely different than my idea about shady. Uh, how to keep them evenly wet. I think I have a solution for that, so I will talk about that uh, later on in this video. And um, yeah, the fertilizer, well, I agree with that. I will talk to the, with that, uh, uh, do more of that subject as well. But just shady and cold. Well, I'm not sure what is cold. Same, uh, same situation. So yeah, it was for me kind of, it took me several years to figure it out and to at least to let them to rebloom, and as you can see, I have currently seven here on the table that are in bloom, and that's from the last two or three years that I have uh, that kind of success uh, with them, and I'm really happy with it, of course. But it took me, like I said, years. So that's said and done. Um, let's start with that because it's very, very, very different. Well, first of all, uh, the lights. I have my notes here, so I keep checking them so I don't forget anything. So shady. Well, I've I grow mine um, under uh, LED lights, and these guys are the only ones, uh, almost the only ones that do not get direct daylight. I found when I grew them in the home, probably the the circumstances weren't as great as in here, but they even do not like the morning sun. I know some growers uh, say they, they take the morning sun or the uh, late evening sun and I, I, I found that they just do not like it. It's just a little bit too much uh, for them. So I think these are very suited to grow on the lights. Actually, they mine do very well growing on the lights. Um, but yeah, I have an LED cool white lamp and a LED uh, warm white. Uh, because the actually grow lights, I need fairly big ones and I need several of them, so they are very pricey. So that's why I, I tried this cheap uh, option. And so far, so good. So yeah, probably grow lights would be even better, but I keep it with these uh, two lights. So it's a more of a bluish light and a yellow light. And thereby I hope they get enough of the color spectrum that they need. So the red, the blues, the greens, yellows. And so far, they do rebloom, they uh, regrow uh, new growth, so I think they uh, they are doing fine. Well, yeah, the second topic, uh, I'm coming back to the first point of uh, one of the points that I made in the intro is uh, keeping them evenly moist. For me, it was undoable uh, uh, when I grew them in uh, in uh, organic media uh, because I was always too late. Because sometimes they are fairly stable, they do not drink much, but then uh, maybe there's a little bit more light or are we getting into the growing season and they start to take up more uh, water. But I had no idea because that 
plant didn't take much water before so and then they start to grow and you don't notice it and you let them dry up uh, a little bit too long and you basically can start from the start again or you even uh, start losing the plant so that didn't work well for me but then i came across uh semi hydroponic cell watering and i was getting into it uh, more and more and start to learn about it more and more and um, I did transfer them into the cell watering system and so far that that has been the best choice for me ever if I have to choose any group of orchids that are family of orchids that do like the cell watering the best I think that uh, those are the Miltoniopsis and I think that's because when they are adapting to the system, they get a water root, so to speak. So the, those waters are, the new roots are getting used to a very wet environment. And because there's always some water in the reservoir, uh, you cannot let them get to dry or you need to skip watering, of course. But generally speaking, uh, you have, I, I just water them once uh, every week and, and uh, they are never completely dry. There's always some moisture in there. So that makes life so much easier, if you ask me. So yeah, I think that is how I uh, uh, give them the evenly moist because it's always uh, the same and they get used to it. So I think uh, that's why uh, they do love this uh, setup so much. And I did try out different pots. For example, this one, I have it somewhere, I believe, on my channel. If I can find that video, I will link it. But this one was, uh, was bare-rooted, basically. And now it's doing very well for me. It has fairly large blooms. And I did put this in a uh, cell watering set setup, of course. And I used a um, net pot for it. So I have the more translucent pots, uh, like on this one. This is a division, a small division of the Her Alexander. But this is just in a uh, translucent, more regular uh, orchid pot, as you can see. And it has quite a root system, so it's doing fine. It doesn't a bit top heavy. So yeah, oh yeah, there's a lot of roots. And I don't really like to take them out if they are in net pots, because then they do seem to break, or I do, some roots, but you can see. A heck of a lot of new roots. I hope you can see it there. Let me check. Yes. So yeah, so, I yeah. Uh, did use those uh, net pots just to check if they uh, would do better. I don't see difference. So in uh, that case, I would suggest using the more translucent pots because they are easier to uh, take out of the pot and put it in as you just saw. So this was just an experiment, but I will uh, change them uh, back or if I have new one, in the near future to those more uh, translucent pots. Talking about uh, climbing, you have some of them, they really do like to climb. Let me uh, grab another example over here. So that's something, whoops, to watch for as well. As you can see, this one is a really, uh, oh, that's the name tag in a way. Let me do it from this way so you can see it's really growing uh, upwards here. So what I do is I also use Cintiq, some, uh, some pieces of Cintiq I like to use, and especially with the climber, so I can uh, lay that Cintiq on top. And yes, it's covered in moss, which I found to be very beautiful, but it, there is Cintiq underneath here. And um, the actual alive moss uh, does like the uh, inorganic mosses as well. So, uh, but yeah, I, like to, I really like the display of it. Well, this is uh, actually a good example. As you can see, we have roots everywhere. So yeah, here you can see the Cintiq a little bit better. That's just how I do it, but still, they go in all different ki kinds of directions sometimes. I'm just leaving them. They have the ability to uh, grow inside of the pot. Luckily, this one has quite a lot of roots, so it doesn't matter that much. But uh, yeah, that's how I uh, deal with the climbing once. Anyhow. So that's the, the up potting uh, uh, in self watering that I like to use. And uh, I prefer uh, the pumice, a small layer of the big pumice underneath in the pot. So the smaller pumice that can go on top of that and doesn't fall out. And then I like to use a top layer of uh, pebbles, the uh, black pebbles. You saw me do that uh, in other videos as well. 
So that's the basic setup that I like uh, like to use to uh, the fertilizer, which I um, do with all my orchids. I keep it low. So uh, um, in summer, it's somewhere between 50 up to 100 parts per million. In winter, it's only 30 or 50 parts per million. So before I forget, that's uh, the amount of fertilizer. So uh, with self-watering, of course, you have that adaptation time, which is very difficult uh, in general, if you're new to the setup. The more experienced, uh, um, of course, you will, uh, it will get easier. But anyhow, you uh, have bought a new uh, of a Miltoniopsis, I'm sorry. And it was time to uh, put it in a pot. Uh, how to root them? Well, I found it to be the easiest way with, actually with almond orchids, I just use RO water with seaweed or kelp. Uh, one of the two, uh, one of those two. I used uh, BioBis Algamic. That's a brand that I can find very easily and works wonders. Just a little bit, maybe five parts per million, 10 parts per million, you don't need more. But especially the first weeks, when I'm transferring them, I uh, use that. And that's how uh, I let them start to root again. Because they are fussy, so they like to dump their root system quite quickly. Uh, and it will, will happen from time to time, but if they are settled, um, they shouldn't drop all the roots. So the, all the roots from last year or the year before, uh, they still drop them. So don't get uh, uh, discouraged if you see that. As long as you keep the, the reservoir healthy, so pH-wise, and not much parts per million in it, it should, they should be fine. They start to regrow on the new growth, put out new roots. Um, that's for later on. So, and, but you can use then a little bit of oral water with seaweed again if they're losing a little bit too much roots. But uh, that's, that depends. But generally speaking, to root them, I use oral water with uh, kelp or uh, algamic in my case. Some seaweeds that works wonders, I found. So try to find healthy Miltoniopsis. That's not always easy. I had a few that had quite a root system on them, but most of the times, if I buy them, they are uh, wiggling in a pot, so they don't have a good root system. They are not really settled in that pot somehow, or they've been too long in the pot, and. So that happens a lot with the Miltoniopsis, maybe uh, because in the nursery uh, they do, did well, but then they needed to go on transport, um, they needed to stand for sale in a uh, garden center, for example. They probably just give tap water, which they don't like, if you, especially if you have bad tap water, so a lot of parts per million, which I have. All kind of things, um, uh, those little things do not help, especially with the Miltoniopsis. It will show it quite quickly if it's unhappy. So um, yeah, try to find healthy ones, it's not easy. But if you are quick enough, if it doesn't have too much water in, uh, in from the garden center and you buy it, you can, can get it to grow again, like we just discussed. Uh, you need to make sure that they start to root again. That's the most important. The blooms, the, the better uh, beautiful leaves will come later on. But the first thing, you need a root system to work with. Otherwise, you don't have to fertilize them because they just don't take it, because they don't have the roots for it. So um, that's really uh, very important, especially when you start growing them. If you are more experienced with them in a the setup, you might buy uh, ones like these that didn't have much roots to start with. And they, Kind of do fine. This one has a beautiful growth here, but still some remains. We have these constantania leaves and a new growth that did fail. This is probably my fault. I, I did get some water in the crown. Don't ask me how. Maybe I did spray it. But um, yeah, this bulb is, has a nice size to it and that's uh, very important. And we will get uh, into that uh, a little bit more just in a second, the signs to watch for. But yeah, start with a healthy uh, plant and uh, start to root it. It's very, very important. Because that brings me to the next point, setbacks. We just discussed it already a little bit. Miltoniopsis, that's why they are classed as the fussy ones, because a, a setback on a Miltoniopsis is done very easily. 
Um, I do get the most setbacks because of spider mites. They, they, spider mites, they love them in my, my case. And it's really a pain in the, uh, you know what? Because especially when they start to bloom or start to make spikes, I have a solution, an oil solution for it, which I will, I will link that I use. Uh, it works wonders, but it will destroy the blooms and the buds. So yeah, if they just start to bloom, you finally get a flower spike on them. And then you notice that they have the spider mites. I have here some old leaves. These are signs of spider mites. These uh, darkest patches on there. Let me uh, bring it in closer. This is spider mite damage for sure. Like I said, Miltoniopsis uh, do, or they do like the Miltoniopsis, <laughs> I should say it like that. And sadly, you, that's why I always have a little bit of those not so nice looking leaves. For uh, That's one big reason I should say it like that, spider mites. And uh, talking about setbacks, uh, these ones, the Miltoniopsis uh, are set back quite quickly. And if you are, uh, as, as, as I was in the beginning, a little bit too late to discover the spider mites because you don't really can see them that well with your uh, naked eye, you may have set it back for a year at least. Um, so you basically need to start again. Uh, it probably will have still a root system, but the next growth might be a fairly smaller bulb because it, it, it's been too, too uh, stressed for too long. Uh, and they uh, they will let you know and it takes quite a uh, quite a time so you need to be very patient with Milton and your and which is very uh, which is also very important is to uh, keep your expectations realistic so don't um, expect too much too early I recently had a discussion uh, on on here on my channel as well uh, well it was not really a discussion but I um, uh, so yeah, I'm sorry you guys, but it uh, turned out that the last part of this video, my mic wasn't working as it should. So I have to re redo this uh, part. Luckily it was the end of the video, but I was right in the middle of uh, talking about the conversation that I have with uh, Lacua. I hope I pronounced your uh, name right, on Miltoniopsis. He has also a very beautiful collection of them and the setbacks and how long it can take to get them back to uh, to health basically which we discussed it can be over a year so it's, uh, it's yeah you need to be patient sometimes especially with the Miltoniopsis um, anyhow so uh, I think I covered basically every tip and trick that I can give you at this moment but I think Miltoniopsis there's always something to learn something to do better and to be honest, I'm very curious to see, maybe one day, I don't think so, but maybe one day I could visit those plants in living in uh, real life, in nature, because I have a feeling that the Miltoniopsis is not probably always completely 100% in the best shape. So there's always some brown spotting on a leaf or something like that. I'm not sure, but um, on, the other hand, on the other hand, we should give them the best care so they should look a bit better generally speaking sometimes but anyhow there's always a challenge with the miltoniopsis but i, I love them and of course if you have uh, suggestions or you grow miltoniopsis in a different climate or in the same climate but you want to add something please feel free to do that because i really like all the information on them and i think uh, the other viewers of these videos as well so please feel free to uh, describe your uh, experience with them in the comment section below this video that would be uh, very great i think for now thank you for watching and i hope to see you at one of my next videos bye bye